Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Celebration Sunday, those who are here and those who are far off. I invite you to stand, get yourself in the mood to sing, to enjoy today's service and be the church. Our opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. <laughs> Now and forever. Amen. 
Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading comes from the book of Ezekiel. You mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I require I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity. But you will have saved your life. Now you mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Good morning. The psalm for today is Psalm 119, which can be found on page 5 of your bulletin. We will read this responsively. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your laws. Make me go in the path of your commandments. Incline my heart to your decrees. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Fulfill your promise to your servant. Turn away the reproach which I dread. Behold, I long for your commandments. The second reading is from the Book of Romans and can be found on page 6 of your bulletin. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the singing of our gradual hymn, All Are Welcome.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we come together today because we need you, we need one another, we need to hear your word, and if we hear it here, may we become so possessed by it that we become servants of it out in your world. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Well, it is really wonderful to be with you all here this week, this Sunday. Last Sunday was a memorable one for all of us. I was laughing that I did my Mitch McConnell day. I couldn't get through my sermon and all of you stepped up and made sure that my health was taken care of and those wonderful men from the EMTs came and checked me out and decided that um, I, if I chose to I could go home and so you all took me home and then I started in the gauntlet of the Kaiser system <laughs> trying to figure out what had happened and lots and lots of stories to tell about that, but I won't. Um, my doctor, I saw her on Friday afternoon and it was determined that I was dehydrated. And that can happen as we all know, and it's something to be aware of. I also, in my blood pressure medication, had a diuretic, which can, can contribute to dehydration. So my doctor changed that medication, sent me home with instructions to drink a lot of water, <laughs> which of course I'm doing. And what happened was that your leadership stepped up in such a wonderful, amazing way to make sure that I was taken care of and that you all were taken care of and that the life of this community continu could continue. As you can see, my duties have been reduced for the rest of my time with you, but I'm glad I can still be with you. That's wonderful. So many people stepped up to make sure that the life of this community could continue from Father Al to Steve to all the people who stepped in. It was just astonishing and amazing. Two take-homes from this event and the week that's happened. Of course, one is watch for dehydration, especially for seniors. Just, it snuck up on me, I have no idea. 
Um, so watch out for it. You all have known times in this congregation where that's happened. So that's the number one take home. The number two is the incredible community that you have here at Christ Church Castle Rock. My goodness, what an amazing community that you all are. Your leadership, Steve, Trevor, Frank, Pat, Al, amazing. So many people, I can't even name you all, but what I watched was you all step up. And so this body of Christ in this place can continue its ministry and its witness to the love of God and Jesus Christ. So I hope you all are just taking great pleasure and great delight in that. And of course, we come together today on Celebration Sunday, and so we can celebrate all that together. So we will continue to do that. In the sense of this day, this Celebration Sunday, this lesson from the Gospel of Matthew 18 today is a bit curious now. How do we tie that in with our life as people celebrating the gospel of Jesus Christ? This passage has been labeled at different times in Christian history a couple of different ways. One of the labels for this passage is the church discipline manual, the manual of discipline in the church. There's another label that has been attached to this passage, and that is the Church Reconciliation Manual. The Church Reconciliation Manual. And choosing between them, we ask the question of ourselves, is the goal of our life in this community to exclude those we've had disagreement with or we consider outside the faith? or we consider sinners, or is our goal to do everything to restore all of us into community together? So we agree that our goal is to bring community together always and always, and how to do that. And that's one way of looking at the instructions that we just heard from this gospel. And the instructions are really clear. If you're estranged from somebody, go to that person. And then there's an, an, a process to go through that you're instructed to go through. The point is not to embarrass anyone, but to work toward reconciliation. The goal is working toward reconciliation. And what that means in the life of a community for all of us is to be aware and to reflect and to gather as we do to read the scripture and to pray and to learn from the scripture passages how it is we're supposed to live in community. What would Jesus' guidance be if we're in a situation where there's an issue in our congregation, in our life? One of the things that's interesting to think about as we reflect on this passage as instruction for living life in community is what is it exactly that Jesus means when he says in this passage, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's a curious language and we're not real familiar with that. Well, binding and loosing, those two terms in English, are come from a Hebrew term for the Jewish tradition of Jesus' time. And it's referring to the importance of understanding God's purpose and God's guidance and God's way of being in the world and God seeking us to be in the world for the here and now we can hear wonderful guidance and wonderful testimony toward that. What is God's purpose? But the point is we need to be open to how do we interpret that for the here and now, the specific circumstances that we are facing in our life in community, the real now, here and now. So, Jesus uses these terms often, interestingly, not in so many words, but he exemplifies this pattern in the Sermon on the Mount. 
He says, well, you have heard it said that, blah, 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 but I tell you, blah, blah, blah. You have heard it said, but I say to you something else. Sometimes Jesus, in doing that, binds more closely to God's purposes. Sometimes what he is saying is more loosely understood. Sometimes he replaces the what you have heard with something entirely new. So Jesus is doing that interpretation, that binding and loosing. And what he is saying to the community is that you continue to do this in your life, always and everywhere. You interpret what, God, what God's purpose is for you. And so as the Christian community, then we then seek to interpret and understand what God's purpose, what Jesus' teaching is. Because, of course, Jesus manifested God and taught and showed over and over and over again how to live in community. And what this passage is saying is that the entire community has the responsibility for doing that. Every single person. Binding and loosing is the responsibility of everyone. Well, it's been an interesting history as the church has sought to understand this binding and loosing and seeking to understand God's purpose for the here and now. As early as the very first communities after Jesus' death and resurrection, there were questions about and how do we do, how do we then deal with the fact that we hear in scripture, slaves obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling. How does that, how do we interpret that? How does that, how is that bound and loosened for us today? So the Ephesians community was already struggling with that. Jumping many generations forward, the next question about binding and loosing is, should women be ordained when we read in the scripture that we're supposed to stay silent and never teach men? That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians. So that we are interpreting, we are understanding how the passage and how the teaching speaks to us now. Should the church bless marriages of divorced people? When Jesus says these marriages break the commandments, we read that in the 10th chapter of Mark. How are we called to be interpreting God's purposes and God's desire for us in our present time, in our present context? Should the church bless marriages of gay people? In other words, are the biblical texts that we have literally binding? Are there reasons to loosen those text understanding, especially those texts that end up condemning people? So this isn't new. The church has been struggling with how to do this. And Jesus again reminds us in this story today that even though it's a struggle and the church has struggled with this forever, we are still called to discern what we are called to do today, here and now, in our present circumstances. What should be bound and what should be loosed? That discernment must be done in community, is what Jesus is saying. It's done by all of us in community. One person alone cannot faithfully do that. So we discern in community. Community is essential. And this is why reconciling is so crucial. So confirmation of labeling this passage as the church reconciliation manual. Well, we also know that the discernment of this binding and loosing that we are continuing to be called to do is not done in the absence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, 
I will be with you. The Holy Spirit will be with you forever and ever. He promised that again at the end of this Gospel of Matthew. Remember that I am with you always to the end of the age. So, yes, we're called into a responsibility for discerning in community about how God's purposes and Jesus' teaching and the biblical teaching refer to us today in our particular circumstances. But the Holy Spirit is with us and has never abandoned us and will not abandon us. So I think that's a great reason to celebrate today, don't you? <laughs> yes, amen. <laughs> As you might know, I'm relatively comfortable with silence. Please stand. Let us affirm together in the words of the Nicene Creed, our faith as community. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Kindly begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found on page 9 of your bulletin or on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, Mother, Creator of all, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Bishop Kim, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers, that they may be faithful ministers. We pray for all who govern and, who, and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. Today we lift up all those we know and love but see no longer. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others.
Today, Lord, we pray for all those in our parish family who are sick, those who care for them, and those who are in need of God's strength and guidance. Dana, Bev, the Ree family, Marlo, Steve, Dietmar, the Browning family, Linda, Ryan, Rod, Melissa, Judy, Joseph and Laura and the Blackstone and Fastert families, Jen, Clint, presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Clark, Freddie, Loretta, Kyle, Kim, Beth, Bill, James, Judy, Dave, Susan, Brian, Darlene, Judy, Tommy, Stephanie, Steve, Amber, Shelley, Wesley, Debbie, our military families, law enforcement and first responders, our homebound parishioners and those in nursing facilities, all who are sick and in healthcare workers who work with, for them. We also pray for Father Brian on his sabbatical that will, it will provide rest and renewal. And today, let us pray together for our country. We pray, we pray for justice, we pray for peace, we pray for understanding, and we pray for an end to the racism, hatred, violence, and political division that continue to infect and divide this country. We celebrate with those who have birthdays this week. Mike Browning, Ken Ash, Ella Wood, Lloyd Patterson, Guy Mordo, Rebecca McDonald, Michael Zerwinski, Mike Boglin, Al Miller, as well as those who have anniversaries, Jay and Kay Neal. Today's altar flowers have been given in gratitude for our parish family and all of our many impactful ministries on this Celebration Sunday. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now, take a look around if you're here on Zoom. I invite you to take a look at everybody. There are people that you don't normally see on Sunday morning because we're together today um, instead of separate. And God bless all of you for making the adjustment today. Um, so do please share that peace with one another or somebody you haven't seen in three or four months. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Some of that is what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what, a, what a gift. And people have been preparing for this day for over a month uh, easily. And uh, so delighted to have that opportunity. As soon as we change the time of worship, you know, it just kind of messes with everything, right? Now, your normal routine on Sunday morning, as well as everybody else's. We're so delighted, Sandy, that you're here today preaching um, and uh, sharing that wisdom with us that God has brought to your attention. I appreciate that so immensely. Um, announcements today, they're in your bulletin. Um, they're pretty standard pieces. Do read them, though, uh, instead of me spending time reading them to you. Um, we are up and running with programming and lots of things going on in this church as always. Ways to give, ways to spend time giving, um, ways to work with each other that themselves are their own blessing. Um, so pay attention to those. Pray about some of the things you see and experience today. We have a couple of really particular announcements from from Kimberly and um, Steve this morning. So Kimberly, would you uh, come up and share with us? And uh, um, she's gonna give us a little option to work at something here. Really appreciate it. Good morning. As we all know, today is Celebration Sunday and we celebrate our church, our parish family and the ministries that we all share. We celebrate the blessings of this community. Today is an opportunity for all of us to come together and re-engage in our faith journeys. It's an invitation to re-look at, at all our church home has to offer and to look at where we are at today. To ask ourselves, <clears throat> would we, <laughs> to ask, excuse me, <laughs> to ask ourselves how we would like to rejoin, regather, and reconnect in ministry with one another and our greater community. Please join us after the service and enjoy brunch and visit with those you haven't seen in a while over the summer and to explore the many ministries that Christ Church has to offer. Check out what is familiar and what is new and consider how you might want to grow your faith this year and how you would like to shine the light of Christ. So I'd like us all to take a moment and pray together. And this may feel new, or it may feel familiar. There's a book in the seat in front of you called the Book of Common Prayer. Please pull it out. Some might need dusting off. And turn to page 261. Which one? 261. 261. And we are going to read together prayer 23 at the top of page 261. And in the third line where they have put the word they may worship, I would like us to say together, we will worship. Almighty God, the foundation of all wisdom, enlightened by your Holy Spirit, those who teach and those who learn, that rejoicing in the knowledge of your truth, we may learn, worship you, and serve you from generation to generation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you this year to really lean in and be a part of all the amazing ministry we have here. So thank you for being here today and celebrating with us. Do 
don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Don't ever let me get in front of a mic. So, uh, so hey, uh, today's Celebration Sunday, and did you also know it's Appreciation Sunday? It is. It is. So, um, I know, uh, you know, we're about halfway into the sabbatical period for the priest who shall not be named. Okay, we'll name him Father Brian, right? But think about it. You don't take the Michael Jordan from the church away without there being some gaps in here, right? And so there's been a lot of gap filling from many men, members of the congregation, right? So many, I can't even name. Uh, just a few that I'm thinking about, but thanks to the pastoral team, right? Thanks to Father Al for stepping in. Um, He's only moving in two weeks, so nothing else going on, right? Uh, Ted Faster, I see Ted there. You know, Chris and Ed is starting up in like a couple weeks, right? Uh, Al Potter, Tony Lamb, Laura Lamb are stepping in to help us lead stewardship this year, which is fantastic, right? Uh, the Wednesday morning prayer group, um, Pat Fisher last Sunday kind of jumped aboard. We had a impromptu prayer session Sunday during our little interesting episode, right? You know, so there's a lot going on. Um, but we also would like to take a moment and thank the staff for going above and beyond just in just so many things that they're doing. So Kimberly's here. Uh, Kathy, could you stand, please? There might be somebody behind you with some flowers. I don't know who she is. That's my wife. Thanks also to Sean. And thanks also to Ash. So thank you for the staff. And thanks to all of you for making this church for what it is and enjoy the ministry fair today. Thank you. Add to that, please, um, uh, dear Ash, who has been in the, the breach of all the telephone conversations, communications, the go-to person for this or that as well. So could you give a, a round of thanks to Ash as well? Yeah. Um, thank you. As we continue our worship today, I want to draw your attention to the fact that last week and this week and next week, uh, we're going to use a Eucharistic prayer that we have not used in Christ Church in some time, um, Eucharistic Prayer 1. Each of the resources we have, uh, most of which are in the Book of Common Prayer in the hymnal, but include some other resources, Eucharistic Prayer 1 has a little bit different theology to it. The words are different. When you change the words, you change the, the meaning. Um, so I invite you to actually pay attention to those changes. Um, the teacher in me never stops. Um, and and those, those pieces of difference may give you just a, another glimpse of the holy that's a little different. Another glimpse of how we do what we do together to give thanks. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for you, an offering and sacrifice to God.
got more going on, just a moment. <laughs> got lots of people to share with near and far. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us together in one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. stewards and show forth your bountiful grace but we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves and we would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation abused one another and rejected your love yet you never ceased to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family, and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior <coughs> Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it 
to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ, Grant that we who share in these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. ministers today, so there will be four cups, uh, two of us as clergy, 
And so two stations for bread. Um, if you would like to receive the bread, please make sure you put out your hands so that you can receive it. Um, if you'd like to receive the wine, you can do so in the cup or by intinction. Um, remember the communion is whole in one kind. Uh, if you'd like to receive a blessing, simply cross your hands over your chest and one of us will bless you as well. Um, so lots happening today. Um, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
stand as we send people out into the rest of our community that are not here today um, to share with us in this feast. It feels a little bit more together if we're actually all standing together to do that. 
So you're on page nine of your worship bulletin. What's that? Okay, it's mismarked on mine. Thank you. <laughs> Glad you're paying attention to the details. Pat, Lucy, and Barbara, we send you out bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we share one bread and one cup. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now that we have been fed with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, and we are sent out into the world to serve him whom we celebrate. We pray together. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we move to eternal life. Amen. May the God who birthed you into this world, the God who sustains you and cares for you, the God who surrounds you with loveliness and beauty, care deeply for your heart and your soul. And may you take that love and be a blessing to the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Closing him, Love Divine, page 19 of your bulletin, please. <laughs>
new ministry, find that passion, talk to each other. Let's go celebrate some more. Woo! All right.